Hi, I'm Michael, and now that we've figured out what things have changed in the new version of Firefox, um, we need to decide what new articles we need to write or what existing articles we need to update. So um, here's how I go about doing it. It's fairly simple. Um, the first thing we want to do is just decide whether um, this new thing, this new change, is something that needs to be documented at all. So in general, here are the types of things that we don't document on our support site. Um, so we don't generally uh, document developer tools or things like changes to web standards, like uh, if we add a new CSS element or unprefix one or things like that. That kind of stuff uh, gets documented on our developer MDN, developer documentation um, site. Um, other things we don't generally document, things like minor visual changes. Sometimes we just tweak the look of something and we usually don't document that. Only it's when it can become, um, you know, confusing or a user might not recognize something anymore. Then we'll go through and document. For example, uh, you know, one time we moved the location of the home button from one side of the URL bar to the other. So home button still looked the same, but, you know, people are looking for it over here. Now it's over here. That kind of thing we do document. Um, other kinds of things like under the hood changes. We make Firefox faster all the time. We uh, make it use less memory all the time. Um, we change, add new JavaScript engines, all kinds of stuff like that. Those things we generally don't document. Again, that kind of gets done on the developer documentation, but it's also things that um, people are not looking for um, answers about, like, ooh, why does uh, Firefox feel fast? You know, I think they, they assume we're working on that kind of stuff. Okay, but what kind of things do we document? So um, we're pretty big on documenting things like new features. So in Firefox 18, we added uh, Facebook Messenger for Firefox as an example. That's something um, we document or, um, you know, we add things all the time. Um, a big feature we added a while back was the Firefox Reset. So we document that. Um, and of course, when we change uh, an existing feature, if we change the way uh, tabs work or bookmarks work, we'd have to document that. Uh, people want to know what's going on. Um, and one of the nice things um, about the way uh, support works, let me show you this. Okay, so this is an article about uh, settings, the options panel or, or preferences in Firefox. This is about your startup homepage download settings. We change these kinds of things all the time. So you'll see here this particular thing is configured for Mac and for Firefox 17. And you'll see here there's a section about add-ons. Here, add-ons. There's a whole option here. But the nice thing that the support site lets us do is you'll see we can customize the instructions for different versions of Firefox. So if I do change it to 18, you'll see that section is gone because actually we removed that setting in Firefox 18. So this way, no matter what version of Firefox you're using, when you show up to the support site, the article is tailored to you. It also, we can also change it for different operating systems, all kinds of stuff like that. So, so changes to existing features, we document those things. Um, and uh, the other big thing that we document are um, uh, questions or problems we anticipate people uh, may have. So, for instance, um, a while back, we um, ended support for Firefox 3.6. We stopped uh, giving it stability updates or security updates. Um, we moved people automatically up to newer versions of Firefox if they had automatic updates um, turned on, things like that. So um, explaining, you know, to somebody what things like that that we've changed. Um, sometimes we don't 
know what problems people are going to have until after the fact. And that's for later in the process. Uh, we'll get to that after a release. We'll find out the things that, that we didn't know were going to be problems that we'll have to document. Um, but so those are the kinds of things that we do and that we don't document. And then um, you search through our knowledge base and see what do we have, what do we not have. So generally, um, if something's new and we don't already have documentation on it, that's a good candidate for a new article. Um, if we have an article on a topic and this is just a change to that, that generally means we're just going to change that article. It's not always the case. Sometimes there's a gray area and we have to talk about it. Um, but, you know, that's the, that's the general way it works. I do want to show you one special thing about searching uh, when you're looking through the knowledge base. So we have a feature um, for our documentation called uh, archiving or making the article obsolete. So sometimes things are no longer a problem or they no longer apply to Firefox and we archive that article. But sometimes those issues come back or um, we make a change in a way that is pretty similar to something that we've already that we've written in the past. So it usually does not hurt to do a search and look through archived articles. So I want to show you how you do that. We use the advanced search. So I'm going to the contributor section here and I'm going to click on advanced search. And if you go down, if you just leave everything alone, and you check include obsolete articles and hit search, you're going to get a whole list of all the articles that are obsolete. There's lots of them. Um, but you can search for a particular thing. You know this, um, you're, you're going to write something about Flash. You might look through the obsolete articles that refer to Flash. Um, that's about it. Uh, and we'll go on next time to actually writing articles, so stay tuned for that.